Welcome back to another episode of the Night Report podcast. I'm your co-host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again is my co-host, Richie Schneiderite. Richie, we have about a week's worth of news to unload on Rocker Scarlet Knights fans. So normally I would start with a little bit of a rundown, but we got to just start getting through these things. We're going to start with football topics, finish with basketball topics. First and foremost, off the top ropes, we had a decommitment from Judah Pruitt, who uh, offensive line, yeah. defensive line, depending on who's recruiting him, uh, he ended up going to Boston College because what he wanted to play a different position mainly. Yeah, he wanted to play offensive line. It sounded like Rutgers wanted him as a D tackle, but it was more of a case where it's like, hey, we're just going to put you on campus. We're going to start you at D tackle, and then we'll figure it out. Maybe you stay there. Maybe you don't. He's got a great size. He's every bit of three hundred plus pounds. I forget his exact height though. Um, I want to say it's yeah, six five, <laughs> six five three three fifteen for or three sixteen for our database. Jeez. Um, but yeah, he, and he's lost some weight. Like he's one of those, uh, cases where Rutgers found this out of shape prospect, I want to say for the most part. And it would have been a case where it's like a Holland Pierce type thing, or, um, a Z Zaire Angoy where you get him to campus, wear him red, red shirt, figure out, um, how to fix his body a little bit in the weight room. Um, and I mean, the strength and conditioning staff at Rutgers is probably one of the better ones among the country. I'm not going to say the best because that's, I don't think that's true, but they're one of the top ones, if I had to say. So I think they would have got him on campus, fixed his body, fixed his uh his weight issues, and then put him at D tackle and see what happens. And that would have been a massive run run stopper right there, at least. Um, just size alone. <clears throat> but it is what it is. He flipped to Boston College this weekend. Uh it kind of came a little bit out of nowhere. I know um I didn't get word of it until Saturday and uh it just happened relatively quickly. Um posted on the boards and he, he committed as soon as he basically was on the visit. So, uh, I, and you know, the bigger kick in the nuts is that it was uh Savon Huggins who recruited him. So Savon oh, got, he's got some deep ties to the, the Newark area and just central Jersey, not just central Jersey, North, New Jersey in general. He's uh he's turning out to be a pretty good, uh pretty good recruiter. So, I mean, it's a little kick in the nuts that if Rutgers alum, maybe, I don't know yeah. if he did graduate, did I he? he? I think he graduated. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm assuming he probably did. I think it was three or four years at Rutgers, but whatever. Um, so, yeah, he's, he flipped, and uh, you just got to go find another one somewhere else. So now you're down to uh, three defensive prospects, defensive line prospects. Yeah, and when, you, when you'd said that he's on a visit to Boston College, I mean, we know Chiano's new policy of – and I say new because I don't think this is how he used to operate things back in his 1.0 era. I think he used to be a little bit more flexible with kids, but I think it's too much of a – you know, if you're either all in or you're not committed at all. So uh, yeah. when I saw he was on a visit, I was like, okay, he's about to he's about to flip or just get dumped, either one or the other. Um, yeah, uh, I think who was That's... the who was the recruit from South Jersey? The the Bermudez. I think he was the uh, last Jojo. guy that was yeah, yeah. That was allowed to take a visit elsewhere. And after that, the policy had uh, totally changed. Yeah, they let him do one. I forget where he visited. I think it was, I Georgia. It was Georgia. Yeah, yeah, Georgia for a camp, and like it's like, all right, don't do it again. Then he goes to Penn State for a visit for a camp, and it's like, all right, well, yeah. you know what? Go, sorry, but go fuck yourself. And now he's yeah, in the portal exactly. with no home, and look what happens. <laughs> Yeah, not to be overly of a downer, uh, but it sounds like there's a few other recruiting situations that are t starting to turn away from Rutgers uh, regarding the class of 24. Yeah, so um, I guess you could just start with the beginning. I mean, running back recruiting, Oafami uh, Ijiboy, Ij Ijiboy. I don't know how to pronounce that one, but um, Penn Pennsylvania kid went on Rutgers official visit. I actually had him <laughs> as part of the class uh, in our June crystal ball because I didn't think they were going to land Yusin Willis, who also I thought was he trying... was really underrated too. I thought he was yeah. really good. <clears throat> yeah, and he's a track star too, so he's he's got some serious speed for his size. But um, it was kind of down to so Rutgers has Gabriel Winowich, who's an athlete for us, but he's going to start out at running back when he gets to campus. Um, and they wanted to add a second back, so it was basically between three names. It was. Uh, Oafami, Jason Patterson, and Yusin Willis. Yusin Willis is uh, rumored to be uh, going to Pittsburgh, although Alabama's kind of undecided if they want to take him or not yet. So they're kind of waiting to see what happens there and um, seeing what happens on the rest of their board as well. But it doesn't sound like it's Rutgers. Jason Patterson likes Rutgers a lot, just visited – where the hell did he go? Kentucky, I think it was. Or, and I think he has Vanderbilt this upcoming weekend or vice versa, one of the two. And then there was uh, Oafami who committed to Minnesota. And I thought the more likely scenario was him ending up with uh, 
with Rutgers, but now obviously that's not the case. So uh, I don't know what they're going to do for running back recruiting. Might have to offer someone else or just uh, wait and um, delay to portal. Um, that's that's perfectly fine because that's what a lot of people are doing now. Um, other than that, wide receiver recruiting starting to take a little bit of a hit because Josiah Brown went to Penn State this past weekend, and everything I'm being told is it sounds like he's going to be a Nittany Lion when it's all said and done. Oh boy! Um, yeah, that's that one's a kick in the balls, um, especially because he technically committed like a year ago today. Not today, exactly, but pretty close. And the staff basically told him to, to just make sure that you want to do this because here's what happens yeah. when you're committed. You can't take more visits. You can't do this. And yeah. I mean, if you, if I want to play devil's advocate here, he had like four offers like when he was going to commit to Rutgers. Then all of a sudden, like Georgia offered uh, mm-hmm. Penn, Penn State. And like, he's got added, like, I think he's got 15 Power Five offers or something like that now. Yeah. yeah. So he definitely blew up a, quite a bit. Um, but it sound, he's also going to Georgia this weekend, so I don't expect a commitment just yet, although I don't expect Georgia to take him either. Um, if Georgia takes him, then he's going to be a bulldog. That's it. Simple as that. If not, it sounds like he uh, will most likely be going, be going to Penn State, and you'll probably see him in a, a game in the upcoming future. But other than that, uh, I'm trying to think. Corey Duff Jr., who's tight end for us but is a wide receiver for Rutgers, um, Wide receiver for a couple of programs, actually. And one of those programs is Miami. So Corey's supposed to decide next, not this upcoming Thursday, next Thursday. Um, and it sounded like it was between Rutgers or North Carolina with his, uh, his mom wants Rutgers. It sounds like dad wants North Carolina. So it's kind of a, a little bit of a battle there. Um, <laughs> the big issue he has with North Carolina is that is Mac or his parents have with North Carolina is, is Mac Brown going to be there for all four or five of your years, which is a legitimate question. He's up there in age. He's already technically, I think retired once or went to analyst or whatever, like what they all do. Cause you can never retire as a football coach. Um, but yeah, so now all of a sudden uh, this weekend he went down to OT seven, which is like overtime elites, like uh giant seven on seven camp. I think it was their championship uh, weekend. And word was like Miami liked him, but they didn't like him enough. And then all of a sudden, I think it was Sunday or Monday afternoon, he uh, he got a call. Miami had a spot open up. He's on a he's going to head to campus this weekend for an official visit. And I hate to say it, but if they if they allow him to commit, he's going to commit. It sounds like so. That's mm, another damn. kick in the balls from New York. Um, after that, Lenny, get your yeah. shit together, dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, you guys want him on the pot. He's got to do better recruiting. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Len. I'm kidding. But uh, yeah, other than that, wide receiver recruiting is a little tough to tell right now. So they have, I'm looking right now, there's six other offers. Three of them already eliminated Rutgers in LJ Booker to Sear Denmark, who just decommitted from Oregon, will also end up at Penn State. And Tehran oh, Hale. Oh, damn, who, really? Yeah, he's going to, yeah. Tehran Hale, I don't know where he's going to end up, but he eliminated Rutgers uh, a month ago. So the other three I'm keeping a close eye on are Kevin Levy, who took an official visit a couple weeks ago, uh, Jalen Hornsby, who was scheduled to take an official visit but didn't take an official visit. But sounds like he's got he just announced the top two of Penn State and A and M. Uh, he was at A and M's campus this weekend, so you can kind of see where that one's leaning without mm-hmm. leaning. But yeah, you know, come on, like <laughs> kind of obvious. And then Sayer Torrance, who I believe is set to he's a former er, former Syracuse commit. He is going to Michigan State this weekend, I think it was, or was it last weekend? Um, no, he was at Michigan State on the ninth, Rutgers on the second. But it sounds like he's kind of starting to field more offers still, too, and see kind of where he wants to go. Um, I still have him pegged as a Michigan State lean, so you're going to have to send some more offers out if Brown and Duff are gone. So uh, other than that, O-line recruiting ain't the prettiest in the world right now. they got two solid commits. In Kenny Jones and Raynor Andrews, I don't see another one out of the uncommitted guys that would end up with Rutgers. D-line recruiting, Caden Brown down the line maybe. Um, other than that, it's it's a lot of question marks. Linebackers, I think you're done with uh, the two linebacker commits. They have two linebacker commits, right? Who am I? Oh, Montel Johnson. Um, yeah. With those two. And then DB recruiting is the interesting one because Jamari Howard was on campus. He was a former Michigan State commit. Um, so he's one to keep an eye on. Willie Love is still favoring Rutgers. I still have him uh, projected to become a Scarlet Knight. Uh, a couple other kids that were on campus recently, and Evan Taylor just committed to North uh, Nebraska. Antonio White, 
or Trayvon Maddox, one of them too, just committed to Georgia Tech. Um, I think it was Maddox. And then, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it's it's not pretty right now. Um, they do have Kaj Sanders on campus currently, four-star recruit. I, I, if you read his profile, I put a recent article out that he's probably the most underrated kid in New Jersey, in my opinion. Um, but he's leaning North Carolina. And Xavier Lucas, who they just offered recently, which when they sent out the offer, it was kind of like, man, no, no shot. Like, this is a really good fucking prospect. Got him mm-hmm. on campus, so they, they have a shot at the very least, but it sounds like he's Florida State's to lose. Um, Illinois hosted him last weekend. Iowa's, or Rutgers is hosting him midweek, then Iowa the, this upcoming weekend. And then Florida State hasn't hosted him yet, but it sounds like he's a back burner type kid where he's like right on the edge of being, or right on the cusp of being a take for them. And I think in the end of the day, when they strike out somewhere else, he'll be a take. So. Got to look elsewhere. Uh, other guys like uh, Vabu Toure committed this weekend, although he wasn't really considering Rutgers. Jalen McClain committed recently to Ohio State this weekend, or not this weekend, recently, and uh, he was kind of considering Rutgers. It's it's tough right now. It's not a, it's not a good look, so you got to pick it back up. I know um, they've had some highs recently with Bethia, Lumen, and Lumen uh, all committing. Montel Johnson, Darkari Gilly. But there's also some lows now. So now it's it's back to the roller coaster ride and just got to start chugging upward again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like a lot has happened with basketball or football recruiting in the last week. Um, yeah. This is, I guess, the time, of, the, the time of year where it typically does. This is like the big commitment time between like May and June. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense. This is where Rutgers always tends to fill out most of its class. And that's <clears> that's <throat> held true this year, too. Um but the, the midweek visits were interesting. Um, doesn't sound like Rutgers is in the driver's seat for me either, but you never know. Who knows what uh, might come out of these official visits. So stay tuned because we'll we'll have some updates on how they end up going uh, once they're completed this week. Um, that's kind of empty in the bag on football. Let's uh, let's pivot over to basketball. So Rutgers received a surprise midweek visit last week from a high school prospect, class of 20, 2023, but he could be a 24 as well. On the Engi, and if that last name sounds familiar, uh, you know, Rutgers had a very famous center, uh, with the last name of Engi, who was the last, I believe, the last Rutgers player to get drafted, too. Um, yeah, in Hamadeh. I think so. Um, so, what are you hearing about him? And, and uh, or do you expect him to stay in the class of 23, go to the class of 25, 24? What, what's going on with uh, Amdi Engi? I see how like you're mixing it up now because apparently 2025 kids can re-enroll as 2023 and vice versa. And it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's wild, man. <laughs> holy, holy shit. That's a mess, but mm-hmm. we could talk more about that later if we want. But uh, yeah, so he's a 2023 kid from Long Island Lutheran. He has an Eastern Michigan offer. Rutgers technically hasn't offered, but it was an unofficial visit. They hosted him on, check him out. Um, let him walk around campus. So now he's, he's dead set. It seems like going to 2024. Although okay. Rutgers is kind of pushing to see if they can kind of convince him to stay 2023 and just sign real quick. but And he would be a, like a developmental guy, like a yeah. guy who's 100% red shirting, somebody mm. they could just like kind of mold for a year. Okay. Yeah, especially because they have uh, Ogbo now, who's set to enroll this week, I think. I think it's this weekend. Yep. Um, him and Michael Davis should be on campus this weekend. Gavin Griffiths, as you saw on all the social media clips, is already on campus. Everyone's loving those. Just he just literally did nothing. He just shot like an uncontested shot, and everyone's like, "Oh my god, he's so good!" And I'm like, "Yo, all right, let's, let's relax. He's he's good. Don't get me wrong, but like, come on." Um, so yeah, so uh, I I think he's gonna go to Putnam Science Academy. It sounds like uh, who some of you are probably like, "Oh great, he's we're, they're screwed. Like they're not gonna get him <laughs> after the Benedongo situation." But no, um, TJ Thompson has some connections up to the New England area. He's got some connections to that staff. Uh, Peichel's got really good New England connections, so I, I wouldn't be too concerned. I like the fact that they're kind of trying to get in more with Putnam because Putnam always takes those type of developmental guys, and it's like, hey, like I don't need to redshirt if I can go reclass real quick and just rack up a couple more offers. So yeah, um, good job by them to get in, I guess, early, late. I don't know what you want to call it there, but um, it's a weird scenario, yeah. but I could see him getting an offer down the line as a 2024. Um it wouldn't shock me because uh, I know everyone's like Dylan, 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 but like you might get another one, right? another get a fifth prospect. And the way this <laughs> recruiting works now, as you see, they didn't expect to have three scholarships at this point right now, and now they do. So, yeah, very, uh, very weird situation. But um, 
Yeah, I mean, he's he's a solid kid. I don't think he's that bad. Uh, I don't think he's bad at all, actually. He's uh, played at Long Island Lutheran Powerhouse Program. I think they're part of the NIBC, which is like that Super League, pretty much. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, he's going to go to Putnam, it sounds like. And uh, I, I expect Rutgers to kind of still show some interest, maybe. Maybe an offer, maybe not an offer. We'll see. Well, speaking of they didn't expect to have three scholarships, one of the reasons they do is because uh, team captain Paul Mulcahy left the program, entered the transfer portal last week, or team two captain. weeks ago at this point. I can't even remember. Um, but it sounds like he's starting to make his visits. I saw that he was taking a visit to Washington, who mm -hmm. I believe you got some good intel on. They kind of threw him the biggest bag so far. Yeah. <laughs> They made him a very generous offer. Them and Notre Dame seem to have the, the biggest offers out to Paul right now. Is that kind of what you're hearing still? Yeah, so we could start with Washington, and then I'll get to those, those fighting Irish in a bit. You guys are going to be a little pissed at that one. But, um, yeah, Washington has the uh, biggest bag out there for him right now. I know the biggest concern is he's very close with his girlfriend, like as every 20-something-year-old is um, in college. Uh, maybe not in college, but um, – He's, close, he's very close with his girlfriend, and she, she's uh, in New Jersey, obviously. He doesn't want to go too far away from her. Although, from what I'm being told, she's kind of like, hey, you have a bag. Like, go get the yeah. bag. Like, I'm not going anywhere. I'll go with you if you really want. So it's just a matter of uh, distance, basically, for New Jersey. And I don't know how New Jersey's point guard is going to play on the West Coast, but that's it's just weird. Washington's point guard. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so – I mean, it's it's hard to turn that down, but he's going he's going out there for a visit. And I'm sure they're going to talk some numbers, and um, it's going to go from there. Basically, uh, <clears throat> the other one to watch out watch out for technically is uh, Notre Dame, who is not the cleanest program, from what I'm told. And um, I'm I'm kind of told Shrewsbury is a little bit of a dirty player here um, when it comes to recruiting transfer portal, whatever you want to call it. So, are you hearing it's a similar situation to <clears throat> Ed Cooley? And Cam, yeah, hundred percent. He's yeah. they're, they're both kind of sneaky douchebags, but that's just read between the, the lines, there, guys. <laughs> yeah, name of the game there. I, not really reading between the lines. So I call him a douchebag, <laughs> but um, yeah. So apparently, there's some dirty, dirty play going on over at the uh, Notre Dame, who's clean and clean program nonstop, right? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so they like that's to the, advertise themselves as clean for sure, but exactly. they're anything but. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, uh, a lot of ways I could have went with that, but I'm going to be nice. Um, also, Kentucky's starting to show some serious interest. It sounds like they have like eight scholarship players, and that's with Joey Hart, who just committed. Um, I think he committed, right? If he didn't yes, publicly, he did. He yep. did. Yeah. No, so, he, did, he did publicly now. Okay. Um, yeah, so they have like eight scholarship players right now, so they're they're kind of looking for anybody at this point. And if they can get Mulcahy, he's probably one of the better guards in the portal, um, they'll take him. They'll just say, screw it. We'll take him and – that's that. So I'd watch out for those three. Gonzaga, I don't know how interested they really are. Um, I haven't talked to anyone from Gonzaga. This is a uh, everyone I talk to is from Paul's camp, and I, I haven't heard Gonzaga at all, to be honest. That's why when Trilly Donovan posted it, I was like, oh, shit, that's a new one. Like, I didn't hear that. But uh, they definitely um, also have money on the table a little bit. So we'll wait and see what happens there. But uh, yeah, I mean, New Jersey's point guard. Josh Captain is uh, no longer going to be in Jersey, it sounds like. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be a, a West Coast point guard starting soon um, if yeah. things go well this uh, this visit to Washington. But yeah. oh, If you're the Huskies uh, coach, coaching staff, and you're listening to this, got to win the girlfriend over, it sounds like. And that's it. <laughs> you're done. Yeah. Yep. Um, but – Moving towards some positive news, uh, Rivals updated its basketball recruiting rankings for the class of 2024, I believe yesterday or the day before. Yes. We've, we've kind of been alluding to uh, okay. some positive yeah, some positive changes in terms of uh, Rutgers targets and Rutgers prospects, uh, Rutgers recruits in general. Um, the new rankings, Dylan Harper, number one, Ace Bailey, number two. Yes. Let that sink in. Let that let that dream you know percolate a bit on the pod. But uh, <laughs> this is a this is kind of it was already an unprecedented situation. But this is truly like a this is something that you tell like your friends in college and you'd be like, "Yo, man, I had the fucking weirdest dream last night. I had a dream that Rutgers landed the top two recruits in the country 
and like everybody was talking about us and like i just i'd never heard of these two kids but like one of them was i guess a pl a brother of one of our players like you know what i mean like this does not feel real still so just tell us a little bit about the updates because we also had a few bumps for other players uh um, in the class so talk about the the recruiting updates yeah so um obviously you just said it basically um D dylan harper is number one uh shocking right Ooh, the best player in, in maybe <laughs> multiple classes like is the I mean, he, from everything we heard, was the best-looking player at the U19 camp, and he's 16 years old, and there was college freshmen in that camp. So Yeah, so I'd argue he's better than the 2023 class, the more I look at it. Um, any, uh, Yeah, probably anyone in the 2023 class. The 2025 class is the one where it's a little interesting because that, that Cooper flag kid is like, he's something else. Well, from everything we're hearing, he's going to reclass, though. So so that might yeah. might bump Dylan at the end of the day. We'll see. But right now, Dylan's <clears throat> name is probably the hottest recruiting name on the on the recruiting trail currently. Um, but anyway, yeah, Dylan's number one. That's huge. Rutgers is still very much in it. I'm hearing there's nothing different at all whatsoever. Everyone's like, oh, he changed his timeline. Who cares? He's just taking visits. <laughs> like, um, He just wants to take a couple more visits and – Honestly, the three official visits he hasn't taken yet is Kansas, who apparently has a bag on the table. Surprise, right? Shocking. Oh, um, yep. Auburn, who I don't know. Bruce Pearl's the squeakiest clean coach there is in all of college basketball, right? Never cheats. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of getting the hint there. And Rutgers. So I think he was going to take those two official visits. Everyone's going to hear for that week whenever he takes to Kansas. Oh, he's going to Kansas. He's going to be a Jayhawk. Everyone's telling me he's a Jayhawk. Probably not going to change my future cast then. I'm not going to change it now. And it's going to be the same thing when he visits Auburn. And then he's going to visit Rutgers. And then everyone's like, oh, wow, Richie, you had the same future cast for since uh, June? Yeah, uh, oh, wow. You're How'd you know? You didn't know. That's bullshit. You were just a, a fanboy like posting it. I'm like, okay, sure, whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. So I'm very confident still. I don't think anything changes. Um, I think Duke is obviously still pushing. Uh, Rutgers is pushing. Indiana's pushing, but I don't think there's any leeway there. Like everyone was talking about Indiana last or two weeks ago because someone asked him an Indiana question when they landed uh, Mackenzie Mabaco. And it's like, okay, cool. Like he landed the Jersey boy. Now everyone's freaking out over his Instagram post because he commented on uh, Mabaco's post or something. Or no, Tyler mm -hmm. Betsy's official was it. That's what he was. Tyler Betsy took an official to Indiana and he commented like a smirking emoji. And everyone's like, oh my God, let's overreact to a, a fucking emoji on Instagram mm -hmm. post. These kids do this for attention. They love it. They thrive on it. So like, <laughs> let's just relax a bit. Let it all play out. It's going to decide. And it, I don't know if you, everyone's saying he's going to decide during his senior year. If you rewatch the video of the interview with Kristen Peak on Rivals, Yahoo, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. um, he said either before my senior year or during my senior year. Yeah. He's not sure. So it could happen earlier. It could happen later. We'll wait and see, but I'm still pretty confident in Rutgers landing Dylan Harper and you and Dylan Harper, you have the number one recruiting class in the country, which, and then you have numbers one and two in the country. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh God. That's just, that's insane to me. And then on top of that, you're also getting uh where were the hell are the other two ranked others three other two. I had I had a ranking up to a second ago. Somerville is going to be 86 in the new rankings. I guess I can kind of reveal it because it's going to be public by the time it uh this pod comes out. So Lathan's yep. going Lathan moves from I think he's 92 to uh 86. Uh yeah, it doesn't have his previous. Uh yeah, he was 92. He gets a bump up to 86. He looked really good in the AAU circuit. Still got some kinks to work out in his game, but he looked really good, and then uh, Bryce Dorch took a little bit of a drop, but I think it's more so just other guys being new to the rankings. So, like, this rankings update, they removed 15 kids from the top 150, and um, he do he does go from a four-star to three-star, which kind of sucks, but he, uh, he drops down from 125 to 134. But the fact that, like, 15 other kids were in the rankings and fell off kind of tells you that these other kids are just kind of moving up. And I, I think it's just a case of others leaping him more than him dropping, I want to say. Do I agree that they should remove a star for that? Probably not, but it's just the way the system works. I, I don't I don't have control over it. I don't make the rules. He's still a very good player. He's still a top 150 kid, a hell of a defender, and a pretty decent offensive player. So I think this is still a really good get for, uh, for Rutgers. And 
that's a we'll wait and see what happens with the rest of them yeah so stay tuned um there will be plenty more regarding the the class ranking updates as the uh you know as things wrap up with the class of 2024 but one thing rivals had that i've seen anywhere else uh from this weekend you guys had a bunch of interviews with the top 10 guys from the u19 camp including an interview with dylan harper which you kind of alluded to yeah. but i just want to like applaud rivals for even getting that because you know you know way more than i that he is not easy to no. get uh <laughs> talking about anything um so that huge kudos to rivals for actually getting him to sit down and clear the air and like I know that from what we've heard, he's not like a big fan of the attention, but he is like a super well-spoken kid. Like he, mm -hmm. like, and it's not just giving like the, it's not just that he seems to be comfortable talking to people on camera. It's that like, he actually processes what you're saying and gives a thoughtful answer to like everything she was asking. It's not just yeah. like, yeah, I just gotta, I, I want to just make sure my teammates play better, blah, blah, blah. No, he was like, I have a, this one specific thing I'd like to work on this camp. And I've been trying to make sure that I am. And when they ask like, who's your, I think they asked him like who the, the best competition he's had here. And it wasn't like, well, all the guys here are great, blah, blah, blah. He actually was like, uh, Jeremy fears. Like immediately he was like talking about like two or three guys that he like really liked mm -hmm. going against. So, um, and we've heard that just from like how he was doing at the camp, uh, the United team camp, there was a lot of people talking about like how they were asking the, the players things like some of the reporters were able to sit in they were t live tweeting about it and basically like, as soon as Dylan was told a concept, he heard it. And then immediately like it snapped into place. He's that kind of learned where you could just like mm -hmm. tell him something new you want him to do. And he immediately does it. So that, I mean, sounds like he's super co coachable, really hoping, uh, things <clears throat> continue the way we think they will, um, uh, with Dylan's recruitment and the way you future cast it. Cause, uh, hell of a player. Um, yeah. Uh, like I said before, like, and he might not even hold the number one spot. Like I, I yeah, this isn't yeah. a knock on Dylan whatsoever, but Ace Bailey is right there. He's number two yep. now. And after talking to Cassidy, who's our national hoops recruiting analyst, and if you read the little blurb he posted, he's he talks about how much potential Ace has, and Ace has a chance to seize that number one spot from him. Does it matter who's one and two in the long run? No, technically, like it doesn't matter. But at the same time, imagine us telling you a year ago today, Rutgers basketball will have the number one recruit in the country. Now imagine me telling you a year ago from today, Rutgers basketball will have the number one and number two recruits in the country. This isn't UNC. This isn't Kentucky. This isn't Duke. It's not Kansas. It's not all those big programs that all of a sudden, like it happens every couple of years for them, which is kind of crazy. This is Rutgers basketball, and they are going to have the number one and potentially the number two prospect in the country or vice versa, whatever you want to call it. That is absolutely bonkers. That is insane. I never thought it would get to this point, but we are, we are here. <laughs> this is crazy. That's the end of, end of rant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you keep saying it, but it is just, you got to keep pitching yourself because it doesn't feel real. Yeah, it's um, not. But recruiting moves quickly. Uh, the class of 2025 last week, uh, I think it was starting the middle of June. Uh, that's when you could start contacting class of 2025 prospects. Yes. If you are a, a program, Rutgers reached out to about, you know, between a half dozen and a dozen prospects. Can you just kind of give us a rundown of who Rutgers has contacted and how they seem to be doing with these guys? Yeah. So let's just start with this. Um, Rutgers is going to have a small, um, I don't even know what they call it. They're going to throw their hat in the ring for a small group of prospects. It's not going to be a big group or not a large group. They're going to keep this, this 2025 class relatively small. Um, especially because you, it's kind of hard to predict what this lineup's going to look like in 2024. And if you do land Ace and Dylan, you kind of have to just assume they're not coming back for a second year. Uh, they're they're too good for it, um, which is not a bad thing. Everyone's freaking out, like, I don't want all these one and dones. And I'm like, dude, shut up. You don't want a one and done at Rutgers? They never won championships, Kentucky. Perfect example. Yes, they also had a bunch of other one and dones, but that's that's just relaxed if you want if you're getting a one and done you, you don't complain you just take it now now we're at the point where you're like i don't want them <laughs> anyway um small small net was casted out a little bit nigel james out of uh new england um darius adams who's obviously rucker's top target and arguably in the 2025 class his ranking is actually going to get updated next week when the 2025 rankings come out I don't know where he sits exactly, but I'm going to find out. His sister, Destiny Adams, is a Rutgers women's basketball player. She's a transfer from UNC that came in this offseason. 
Um, I think she just moved in a week ago. So Darius was with her on campus. It doesn't count as an offic- unofficial visit because that would use a lot of stuff. You have to go behind the scenes in order to uh, count it as an unofficial. It's just more of him. Like he was walking through the APC with her. If he bumped into the coaching staff, he's like, Hey, that's it. It's nothing really in depth. They don't go through the locker rooms, but he gets to see like the women's side of things too, while helping his sister move into campus. So that's huge, but kind of bad news there is that he's going to transfer out of Manasquan high school. It sounds like it's going to go to the NIBC, which I mentioned before is like a uh, high school super league for the most part. Um, it sounds like he's either going to sunrise Christian, which is down in Arizona or La Lumiere, which is in Indiana. La Lumiere, you guys might remember as the stopping ground for Gus Yaldin, a former Rutgers, uh, big man target. Um, other names to keep an eye on Brandon stores out of New York. He's in a, he's one to keep a close eye on because he doesn't have a Rutgers offer yet, but he could get one real soon. What's the connection here? Steve Hain coached his father um, back in the day. Steve Hain is the chief of staff for Rutgers. Um, uh, he also has deep roots to New York City area, so he might want to stay close to home. His uncle was Manhattan's assistant coach since 2017 to this offseason. And then all of a, he actually got the intern role when Steve Masiello got let go. And uh, there's a lot of people that actually pissed that he didn't get the uh, the head coaching job or even get a shot at it, really. So now he's with NJIT as an assistant coach. Uh, like I said before, his dad's a New York guy, played played for Steve Hain. The kid's all New York, so it would make sense for him to kind of stay local-ish. Got to watch out, obviously, for uh, St. John's and uh, Syracuse as well. Uh, other than that, uh, Nikola Bandalo is a Serbian prospect. He's actually playing out in Ohio, though, but... TJ Thompson's doing a great job there. They're trying to get him on campus really soon to try to lock it up relatively quickly before he keeps blowing up. So we'll see what happens there. And then trying to cap to cap it off, Marlon Williamson's finally getting in the game. It seems like he's got he's got some skin in the game, as uh, people like to say. They offered two Michigan kids in Darius Acuff Jr. and Trey McKenney. Trey McKenney has number forty four in the country. Acuff isn't ranked, but he will be in the next uh, update. Two Michigan kids. He's got deep ties to that uh that Michigan area, that Detroit area specifically. And I believe it's Darius, one of them too, and I believe it's Darius Akuff, plays for the family AAU program, which Marlon Williamson helped start, blah, blah, blah. Connections, connections, connections. And that's that's basically recruiting nowadays. So we'll wait and see what happens there. But uh, with 2024, basically Dylan and maybe one other, it's kind of starting to shift now towards 2025. And we'll see, see who uh, ends up landing where. Yeah, so that'll be something that evolves over time because it just seems like it goes from they're showing interest to they're a leader or they're totally out pretty quickly with, with basketball recruiting. So yeah. <laughs> that'll be something that uh, we'll have to monitor closely over the coming weeks and months because certain guys Rutgers seems to have a leg up with, like you said, and certain guys you just don't really know because they're going to drink him from a fire hose right now with all these schools contacting them. But – yeah, land two of the top. You land the top two prospects in the country. That's something everyone notices. So, uh, especially if you turn okay. those guys into lottery prospects for the NBA, I mean, you don't really have to turn them into lottery guys in the NBA if they're the top two kids in the country. You just hope they uh, they don't you don't pull a Duke and you have three of the top five prospects in the country and none of them end up being lottery picks. That's pretty embarrassing. Um, yeah. So we'll get see, but. Um, the last Tara. news item I have on the list here is that uh, we previously <clears throat> had talked about that Rutgers was going on an international trip this summer. Then we clarified where they're going. Uh, they're going to Senegal and they're going to Portugal. But now uh, they've announced the press release. They've talked about the entire trip. <clears throat> so just to kind of lay it out, they're going to be stopping in three cities from August, Tuesday, August 8th to Saturday, August 19th. They're going to start in Dakar, Senegal. Uh, they're going to spend three days there. Um, then they're going to go to uh, a city in Portugal that is escaping my mind um, for four days. And then they're going to finish their trip in Lisbon, Portugal, which is the capital. So Dakar is the capital of Senegal. Lisbon's the capital of Portugal. Uh, they, didn't, they haven't announced yeah. who they're actually going to play, but they're going to spend a total of 11 days there. And this is just like it's such a huge developmental time for the team because you get to, it's basically like having a, for lack of a better term, like a spring practice for, for basketball um, yeah. that you normally would not get. Uh, but 
have you heard anything about how this trip is going to go and, and what they're, <clears throat> they're looking to get from it? So they get like, Oh, my camera just got really blurry somehow. I don't know what happened there. Um, so they get like uh, 10 practices, I believe, to prepare for the foreign tour. So like you said, spring practice, that definitely helps. Um, and then they're going to Senegal. And you know who else is going to Senegal I was looking at is uh, UNC Greensboro, which I found interesting. But they said that they're going to play two games in Senegal and then three in France, whereas Rutgers is going to play a couple in Senegal and then go to Portugal. Completely different. Now, not many teams I'm looking at have ever traveled to Senegal because I was trying to see like previous trips from guys to see who they potentially could be playing. But I don't, the more and more I look into it, I don't really think that there's many games that like, uh, I get technically the NBA Academy Africa uh, training centers in Senegal. So I wonder if they go to that. I don't really have any details yet as they're still working out the, the final kinks of where they're going to go and what they're going to do. But it does sound like they have a schedule set in place of who they're going to play. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to figure out who, um, but yeah, they're going to be in um, Senegal from the 9th to the 13th. And then the 13th to the 16th is Portugal. And then 16th to 19th is a different city in Portugal. So we'll wait and see what happens there, but uh, it's, it's kind of cool. Like they get to do a bunch of stuff, like a kayak tour. I'm reading about a wildlife park, um, <clears throat> pink Island, no pink Lake and gory Island in Senegal, which I, I haven't looked up yet, but I'm sure it's probably, crazy views in terms of uh nature and stuff like that i guess i don't know i have no idea to be honest i really had i have no idea what any of these places are i've never been to either and i'm not no i'm not going with them on the trip um would like to It'd be interesting but that's a it's a little out of my budget a little last minute too um it'd be one thing if if they're bringing you on as an esteemed guest or if i was willing to you know foot the bill for it <laughs> otherwise it's uh it's tough to to swing going out there but um yeah so it sounds like a great trip especially for the uh the younger guys they'll get basically what it's equivalent to like a you know a training camp um like for the for the new and for the inexperienced guys and for the guys coming out of the <clears> team this will be a huge period I know we have a lot of uh, players who originally hail from Africa, so this is a great time. I, I don't know if, obviously, we've talked about how it's hard to make money as a an international student uh, via NIL. And these international trips are a great way to allow that to happen. So that's another uh, feather in the cap for this trip. Um, who knows if players like Emmanuel Agbole <clears throat> or Cliff Almarie are going to have family members out there because Senegal. I believe is neighbors, uh, Nigeria, where they're both from. So, uh, it'll be, it'll be just be great for these guys to, to be on a trip together and to bond, uh, and get closer, uh, before the season actually starts. We kind of ran through a lot today, Rich. Is there anything that we missed out on that you wanted to hit on before we go? Transfer portal this week. Transfer portal. This yes. Weekend. That is a huge item that we forgot. Yeah. Completely forgot about it. So what are you hearing about the transfer portal? They're, they, they're going to have someone on campus this weekend. Uh, I don't have a specific name yet that I want to put out there, but um, they will have someone on campus this weekend. They're targeting a guard. You could probably do the math and go through the portal list, or you're probably just going to go through the list and just look at a bunch of big names that aren't realistic. Um, but yep. uh, yeah, they're going to have a portal guy this weekend. We'll wait and see how that plays out. But um, they, based on who I was talking to, they sound a um, little bit confident. So we'll wait and see what happens there. It could could get some news this weekend. But sometimes, like the Dorch situation, it doesn't happen right away. So don't panic when when nothing happens. Like give it a couple days or like a week with Dorch, for example. And there you go, boom, commitment. So. And uh, just to to clarify, they're keeping this <clears throat> under lock and key. Like I think they've kind of decided to play things a little closer to the vest with how their off season is gone. Um, I they're mean, usually fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. But they're usually pretty, uh, pretty open, but they just kind of want to lock things down. Uh, but speaking of basketball, we're going to have a very special guest on at some point this summer. I can't say who or when, but uh, he might be some of your guys favorite. Uh, one of your, one of your favorite employees of, Rutgers Athletics. I'll just put it out there. Um, it's, a, it's a wide variety. Speculate, yeah, you can speculate as to who that might be, uh, but we're really excited for that guest. And something we talked about at the end of last <clears> week, <throat> or the last episode, was that you know we thank you guys for for subscribing to the YouTube channel. We talked about having a giveaway at 
the end of the last episode, uh, if we got to 3,000 subs. And here's what I want you guys to do. We are going, anybody who comments below in the YouTube comments uh, with the term, <clears throat> what, do we, what do we want to use? Oh, keep, you know, I was going to say keep chopping. Uh, no, we got to make this basketball centric now. No offense um, to basketball school. So makes sense. Uh, comment below. Pound and nails. Um, yeah, pound and nails. Comment below, pound and nails. If you comment pound and nails below, you will be entered into the contest. If you are a round table, if you're a premium subscriber, you're going to enter twice. So enter your, not only do pound and nails, but post your screen name for rivals. And if you're a round table menu, you'll get two entries. And uh, at the end, uh, let's just say in two weeks, we'll do a drawing. We'll do a drawing live and Richie will have the prizes there. Uh, for the giveaway. If you are a winner, we'll contact you to get your, your shipping information and we'll ship those out to you. So like I said, pound and nails below, you'll get one entry. If you're a premium member and you post your screen name, you'll get two entries. And then we'll do a live drawing uh, for the prizes. I think you said there's going to be two or three. Yeah, um, I think I have three, four, uh, maybe four actually. Um, no, no, three. We'll go with top three. All right. So we're going to do three yeah. prizes. One is the, the Ron Harper <clears throat> jersey, right? Mm-hmm. Ron yeah, Harper is... jersey. Uh, I think I have a Cliff Amori jersey, and well, we could do a subscription too giveaway. Yeah, we could do a year sub too. Um, so we'll just do the the first person to get picked. We'll get to choose there. We'll just go in order. You'll get to pick whatever prize you want of the group. Yeah. So once again, thank you guys for subscribing uh, and, and helping us get the channel growing. Um, we'll do another giveaway at some point. For, we'll set another goal, but for right now, we're happy to achieve that goal. We also want to thank all the people who have uh, not only subscribed, but also rated and reviewed us on whatever platform you use. That really does help us Keep doing visibility. It. Keep doing it because it's only going to help us grow. And I, I, I guarantee the guests that we're going to have on this summer would not have come on, you know, when we started this podcast, um, because now we've reached a pretty large audience where we're getting a lot of people who reach out to us to, to join that. We don't even know if it makes sense to come on the pod, whereas previously we would have loved to have. The, the people contacting us to be on, but yeah, yeah, we're, we're going long here, but we want to thank you guys <laughs> so much for, for listening. Uh, thanks for joining us once again, but for me and Richie, this has been another edition of the Nerd Report podcast signing off.